Good evening, all. Tonight, I'd like to share with you my journey of faith, prayer, and discovery in forming the Caregiver Circle of Faith Ministry here at St. Paul. Uh, it is for both family and professional caregivers. Who am I? I'm a parishioner of 47 years. I am, uh, I say, three score and 17, actually 77 years old. I've been retired for 11 years, and I volunteer with several organizations in the area who serve uh, seniors. Uh, the Circle of Faith's mission is to help caregivers cope with the daunting pressures of caregiving by offering spiritual comfort, emotional support. Our goals are to welcome caregivers, to listen to them, and with the Holy Spirit's guidance and prayers, help them help themselves spiritually and emotionally, and to provide a comforting and safe haven where caregivers can come and discuss their concerns and issues. How did I get to this point? In the spring of this year, I had a wake-up call. I was diagnosed with degenerative spinal arthritis, which is a condition that causes the spine to deteriorate over time. At the current time, with a lot of rehab and, or, yeah, rehab and exercise, I've uh, been, I'm, let's say, able to walk and uh, get around very nicely. But I know that it, you know, what, whatever, it, that it could uh, deteriorate over, over time. Then it's then that I realized it was time to get serious about why I was put on this earth. And being 77, time was limited. Ever since I retired 11 years ago, I've been searching for ways to serve seniors and the elderly. I thought perhaps serving caregivers might be a, a good answer. Uh, and going on the internet, I came across a quote from Rosalind Carter, a former first lady. She said there are only four kinds of people in this world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, and those who will be caregivers, and finally, those who need caregivers. Also, about four months ago, I attended a Where Profession Meets Faith uh, session, uh, seminar <laughs> session here, yeah, in which Father Masudo talked about how he ministers to the sick and dying. It struck a chord with me. I had also been, I have also been a committed adorer at the Eucharistic Adoration Chapel for about four years and am currently in the healing prayer group. There is a large list of those to pray for and I thought it might be one form of caregiving. But I sought more. I meditated and prayed, prayed about this, about what I had discovered. I also talked to Jeff, April, Father Mazzullo uh, about uh, how to bring this about. Gradually, an idea came to me to form the Caregiver Circle of Faith. I realized that I had not come to this point overnight. Let's go back to the last century. That's not too many years ago. I grew up as an only child in a single parent home. My mother retired at 65 and lived to the young age of 99. In those 34 years, I tried to support her in whatever way possible. The problem was I lived in Park Ridge and she lived in Aurora, about 45 miles away from here. Uh, my task of supporting her began with simple things like changing the smoke alarm batteries and progressed to finding a way to get her to give up driving. 
By the way, she never forgave me for doing that. Um, and then moving her into a retirement and assisted living facility in Aurora. But the biggest challenges for me came during the last 10 months of her life. My wife, Dee, and I had come back from a week's vacation to find her in panic. Even though she had, she was well cared for in the uh, assisted living facility, uh, her, had friends at the facility, had nieces and nephews in Aurora and could, that she could call upon. She still felt we had abandoned her. Within several weeks, she developed a severe case of shingles and was hospitalized and essentially took to her bed. The result was that we had three days to find a nursing facility for, for her uh, here in the Park Ridge area. Needless to say, it was hectic. Somehow we did it, and I now realize we were guided by the Holy Spirit. Due to complications, also, due to complications, she could not eat solid food. She had a corkscrew esophagus. She had also given up on living, but was afraid of dying. It was at this point I felt totally inadequate. She was devoted to the Sacred Heart, and I tried to get her to visualize the heavenly mansion that the Sacred Heart had built for her. I used the song, Raise You Up on Angel's Wings, to take her mind off the fear of death. After her death, I had questions about why I felt inadequate, both spiritually and emotionally, uh, in dealing with her uh, last uh, few days. That was in year 2000. Let us force fast forward to this year. As I mentioned, I had a wake-up call being diagnosed with the spinal arthritis. And now let us return to my ongoing journey of faith. This brings us to my ongoing journey of faith, prayer, and discovery, informing the caregiver circle of faith. As I mentioned, I have been a committed adorer for four years. Eucharistic adoration has had a profound effect on me. I now think of prayer as a conversation with Jesus. I do most of the talking. I know I'm supposed to, this is supposed to be the other way around. But I have to learn to listen. I am still searching for the meaning of love as in God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In adoration, I have tried to surrender to God's will. I know God has plans for me, but he does not seem to be telling me what he wants me to do. So maybe I'm not listening. I don't know. Uh, if I also learned that if you let Jesus, uh, uh, if you abandon yourself to Jesus, he will send the Holy Spirit to empower you to deal with everything that uh, comes your way. I ask Jesus also to send the spirit of true peace so I can better serve him and overcome the fear, my fears and worries. I'm a devote uh, worry ward. I worry about everything. I also learned that daily prayers are necessary to make any spiritual journey. Uh, it's in a conversation such as, uh, Jesus, how do I handle this matter? After meditating, I had the vision of forming the caregiver circle of faith here at St. Paul's with a four goal, fourfold goal. One, to help caregivers realize that the Adoration Chapel can be a spiritual respite. It is there for them 24-7. Help caregivers realize that prayer is conversation with Jesus and that they need to make Jesus a partner in caregiving through daily prayer. To help caregivers realize that they must take care of themselves. This is one of the biggest things. 
most people, most caregivers do not take care of themselves. They're so busy taking care of the other person that they neglect their own health. And finally, to provide a safe environment where caregivers can meet and discuss their cares, their frustrations, stresses, and learn how to deal with uh, and have, learn from others how to deal with these issues. This past Sunday, uh, Circle of Faith had its first meeting. It was at uh, 2 p.m. in the Canaan Center. Nine people attended. We, we uh, promoted it quite extensively. Most were former family or professional professional caregivers. At the meeting, it was voiced that the current caregivers are the ones most in need of our help. As they face the daunting task of what they need, a daunting task, and what they need is a comforting place to discuss their emotional and spiritual needs. We discussed how to reach current caregivers to get them to come to the meetings and to provide them with the comforting space they need. At this stage, not sure how this labor of love will evolve. It is definitely a work in progress. We have scheduled another meeting uh, for Sunday, August, October 16th. That's October 16th at 2 p.m. in the Canaan Center. And I invite all and I mean everyone, to pray to the Holy Spirit to guide us in this labor of love, to attend the meetings and share your experience with caregivers, and to pass the word, and especially pass the word, about the caregiver circle of faith, that it is there for both for them. Uh, I'll close with a quote. Love what you do, and you will never have to work another day in your life. I thank you. Are there any questions? What, what caused your spinal arthritis? Uh, unknown. <laughs> I wish I knew. I asked the doctor what, was my, what were my choices. He says, uh, live with it, uh, have surgery, or get shots. He wasn't very encouraging. <laughs> it's just it's something we have to live with. Jerry, could you share with us um, one of your concerns uh, with your mother about her her spiritual life and uh, about your your desire at the time? Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, as I mentioned, that she had a thought that we had. Uh, totally given up on her, totally abandoned her, and 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 that she was also uh, devoted to the Sacred Heart. Now, what I tried to do was to get her to realize and remember this this lady had taken to her bed. She was virt, virt to semi comatose. Uh, I tried to just build a vision, help, help her build, build a vision of what the next world is, because she was afraid of dying. Uh, also, uh, that, and to give the, uh, give the, the, give her the thought, or implant the thought, that the Sacred Heart had uh, provided a wonderful mansion in his kingdom. Any, there are some brochures in the back. Uh, one is, um, um, I am a volunteer of, at Fish of Park Ridge. We provide, uh, we drive people to medical appointments. It's free of charge. And if you know of anyone who needs that service, there is a, a brochure in the back. Also, I prepared a 
um, pamphlet about use of adoration chapel by caregivers. That is also in the bag, if you wish. And I thank you very much for your attention.